And welcome once again, Punabo Inko Taria is a civil rights advocate and he's joining us. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Great to have you here. Um, so, of course, it's, um, I, I believe it's right to say that we are currently in the build-up to the next general elections. And there already have you know, been these conversations concerning what next. You know, these political parties, you know, are Nigerians tired? We, do Nigerians want something different? Um, there's going to be, of course, uh, engineering, political engineering here and there. And one of those things are pressure groups. So let's start with, you know, the idea of pressure groups and how relevant they are with Nigeria's uh, electoral system. Uh, do you think that they still have any bit of relevance? Oh, yes, of course. We need these pressure groups. And um, they have uh, great and quite important relevance. Because, like, you know, resigning yourself to faith is madness. It's to be crippled part. And so nobody wants to resign himself to faith, especially in Nigeria, given the cataclysmic leadership we have right now. And this has given rise to um, the various agitations going on in the country. Uh, so if you ask me, I'll tell you, bet for the pressure of good. I believe that the tyranny we're experiencing in the country today would have been worse. Bet for the pressure of God. We, believe we have a government that is impervious to criticisms a government that uh, is quite insensitive to the yearnings of Nigerians, notwithstanding the hardship that Nigerians are facing. And this is a government that believes that it knows it all. So, bad for this pressure of groups, I tell you, the situation would have been worse. Okay, and, and, and let's also talk about the foundation of the current administration. Um, I believe, you know, that some of these pressure groups also played a huge role in bringing the government into power. Yes, they did. That's, 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 in fact, that underscores the importance of pressure groups. Because a lot of them, before now, the uh, uh, um, assumption of office uh, of uh, President Buhari or General Buhari, I prefer to refer to him as General Buhari right now, uh, of General Buhari, a lot of people felt that the PDP government had performed abysmally. That was the thinking. Uh, and so they felt they needed to change. Uh, Mr. Inkotara, can you hear us? All right, we seem uh, to have uh, had a quick uh, well, glitch there with uh, the connection. So we'll, we'll, of course, bring back uh, Opunabo Inkotara to share his thoughts on pressure groups. Okay, welcome back. I think we can hear you now. Go ahead, please. Oh, we may have lost him again. Okay. Um, the, the conversation really is about pressure groups. If you followed the show yesterday morning, uh, I spoke with um, Okpe and me, Orinowo, who spoke about what is necessary for Nigerians to, to be able to engineer young Nigerians to get involved with the electoral process. And some of the conversations we had yesterday were still about pressure groups. How can you know, they, they you know, uh, you know, put in you know, some effort into getting more people involved with the electoral process. All right, Mr. Ingotaria, welcome back. You, you were speaking about the 2015 elections. Oh, yes. I was just talking about the relevance and importance of the pressure group. You know, I said it was as a result of the pressure group that Mr. President, the present president, came into office. Because the whole of Nigeria, it was like a referendum of a disapproval of the system, which was the PDP system. So Nigerians in there, they changed. And they felt that the harbingers of that change was going to be the APC-led uh, uh, the APC government, led by General, then General Mohamed Bouhari, now President Mohamed Bouhari. And that was why Nigerian voted for the APC to kick out the PDP. But unfortunately, if you just oppose the achievements of both the ADP, the P, uh, PDP and the APC, you realize that the APC has performed abysmally. The APC has performed worse than the PDP. And that is why you have this agitation that has assumed apocalyptic dimension. And that is why you have the likes of Tunde Bakari and Co. now coming out, expressing the views of Nigerians that we can no longer resign ourselves to peace. We must take our destiny in our hands, or else we are no man goes to sleep with his roof on fire. And the roof of Nigeria is on fire. So we must react. And that is why you have all these pressure groups. And this situation is worsened by the fitful blowing of the tempest of justice in this country. 
Look at the citizen chairman today. He's gone to court. But look at how the CJN was removed from office. Even before they had to regularize the procedure, they had already removed him from office. He was already out of, suspended, before they had to regularize the procedures. Because there was a breach in procedural obligation. So you find that there is a lot of diffidence in the society. You A lot of hunger, the hopes of Nigerians have been dashed. Promises of a better future as by the president have been shipwrecked. And there is despondency in the system. There is hunger in the system. And that has given rise, that has precipitated the pressure group we are having today in the country. It never in the history of this country has the tenuous legation been so threatened than now. Yeah, all right. Um, there, there's also something that is important with the pressure group conversation, and that is trust. Um, is there a way to measure the sincerity of their promoters? Because if you see the response to, to Nibakari, and not just him, um, Omoyele Shawari, uh, there's numerous, you know, of these persons, you know, who, um, you know, have spoken, you know, their thoughts and shared their views on the current administration and also shared their views about, you know, new, you know, third force springing up here and there. Um, there's still a trust deficit. So, so how can we measure the sincerity of the leadership of these groups? Well, you cannot really foresee because you don't have the gift of clairvoyance. So the ability to decipher is a function of what you see and the antecedents of this character. Now, the issue of Tunde Bakar is making waves, creating waves, because of the putativeness of Tunde Bakar, the, the character of Tunde Bakar. That is why it has generated a lot of Ferrari that it has generated. So, right yes, I, but I can tell you that he has vitiated. Because people have started giving interpretations into his actions that it is more autocentric than altruistic. That's in the case of Shoere. So it all depends. But that does not in any way appreciate the fact that these groups are a referendum of a people's disapproval of a system of a government. So that we should not take that away. That is the most important thing. And whether the people are sincere or not, I'm talking of the leaders of these groups are sincere or not, the fact remains that they are all saying everything. They are speaking in unity. They have said what is in sync with the feelings and interpretations and understanding of Nigerians. So it is not about the leaders, they say. No, it is not about them per se. It has to do, not just the messenger, but the message itself. It has to do with what they are saying. It has to do with what they are debating for and what they are debating against. So that is the most important thing. And I can tell you now that most of the issues raised by these agitators are in tandem with the views of Nigerians. And that is why it is having the weight it is having today. Yeah, but the, the challenge with that, um, I'm not sure if you would agree, is when Nigerians see these pressure groups and look at the, the leadership, um, a lot of them, you know, develop cold feet because they don't want to be used, you know, to, you know, achieve the goals of a, a certain person or a certain group. And if you, you've mentioned the way you've described the way the government has been run since it came into power in 2015, it also came through a pressure group. And so when Nigerians look at leadership of some of these pressure groups, you know, they might have, you know, rethink and say, yes, you might be speaking the truth, but I don't trust you as a person. Um, and you know, the, the, what you are trying to achieve you know, from this pressure group. And, and that is, so isn't there a challenge there with the trust? People have also said that some of these pressure groups are really just a distraction. Um, and you know, until you know, we are able to you know, you know, fix our electoral process, these pressure groups are only just going to reduce the votes of one side or help one other side win. These are the thoughts of Nigerians. Yes, uh, but, but I, I will not completely agree with your submission, even though I'll agree with the tenor of your argument, but not with your submission. Now, for example, I might not agree with Inam Bekano. The paradigm, his ways, his modus operandi, his statements, and so on, which I think they're uncouth and brash. But that does not mean I disagree with the ideology. That, that, that is one part. That is the distinction I'm trying to create. That we must distinguish uh, differentiate between the messenger and the message. Yes. That the evils have been relegated. That the evils have been humanized. That the evils have been subjected to all kinds of 
injustice. It's a fact. I'm not Igbo. I'm a reverse man. I'm not an Igbo man. And I will never be part of Biafra. If today they say River State is the fact, that's one reason why I don't even like it, they can't, because they said River State is part of Biafra. But that does not in any way mean that the what he's saying about the Igbos are false. So when you realize that, yes, we can discard the messenger, but what with the message? We must not make in and I'm using him as an example, it's hypothetical. We must not make in and decano if today, tomorrow, you have the Federal Republic of Biafra. Inam the Kano must not be the president of the Federal Republic of Biafra. You might have another person, imagine as the president of the Federal Republic of Biafra, but he might only be the Habinja. He might only be the foreigner. Moses led the people out of Egypt, but he was not the one that took them into Israel, the land of Canaan. So we are here, in as much as we impugn the integrity, the credibility of a lot of these leaders, a lot of these front runners, that has not in, in, not in any way whittled down the effect and impact of the message they dispense. Okay, absolutely. Um, you know, but now let's talk about 2023. Um, how do you think, or what would you, you know, suggest, you know, for anyone who, you know, is setting up a pressure group? How do you suggest that, you know, they can be relevant in the build up to the 2023 elections, and what do you think they can achieve? Unfortunately for the government, it is one government that sees dangerous enemies in the faintest shadow and so the fighters to the start plot behind every dissenting war. It's a government that ordinarily should have come to nerves, heal the broken and ruptured landscape and not make issue threats and make incendiary statements. In 2023, or in the build-up to 2023, what we have experienced thus far is going to be a dress rehearsal. The political hustings have started. You can imagine Tunde Bakari now spitting fire and brimstone, unlike before. These things are happening because we want a change. We don't want the APC government to continue in office. Now, it is so sad that the opposition party, which is the PDP, it's not even viral enough in opposition. You cannot even say this is good between the APC and the PDP because they are one and the same. The PDP members of yesterday are the APC members of today. Some of the APC members of today were the PDP members of yesterday. They are one and the same. What Nigerians want is a leader Unfortunately, only the APC or PDP can win elections in this country because of the pecuniary involvement, the financial involvement. They have the money, the financial muscle, and that is why they are the only ones, because they've been in office, they are the only ones that can win elections today. We have to address two major issues if we actually want a change. One, the Electoral Act. Two, we have to carry out massive major reorientation. Telling the electorate, yes, when these people come, because you are hungry, stomach infrastructure, collect the money from them, but vote your conscience. And that is where the Electoral Act comes in. That is where the Electoral Act is crucial. And it is the realization of this fact that the National Assembly members embark on delusional legislative discussion by attempting to subvert in advance the will of the people, which by amending the Electoral Act, which they have no power to amend whatsoever. Because for you to amend that particular Electoral Act, or for you to stop electronic voting, you must amend Section 78 of the, uh, of the Constitution, which empowers INEC to sue moto, decide on the paradigm of election the conduct and regulation of elections. Until you amend that particular act, any other law that is inconsistent with that is null and void. So they acted ultra violent. But in their hurry to perpetuate themselves in office, they forgot to amend the Constitution, that provision of the Constitution, before amending the Electoral Act. 
Because they know, most of them know, that in a free and fair election, they will never win. They are foisted on Nigerians. This is an opportunity for Nigeria. I know does not even need to challenge that. Just go ahead. Unfortunately, we have a court. The court is also a problem in this country we live in. INEC, the Constitution has empowered INEC on deciding on how best to conduct elections. So if INEC had used uh, uh, electronic voting or electronic uh, 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 transmission in 2015, 2019, or what, any year, it had the power to show you. But for the court to say no, it was not recognized in the Electoral Act. It was a clear case of, case of fire infusion. So the court is also a problem because it was a tax jury, com compromised jury. Having said this, let Nigerians take the money from these money bags and vote their conscience. INEC has said it will go ahead. It will not subject itself to uh, the Electoral Act, submit itself to the uh, proposed Electoral Bill. It will not. It will go ahead and do what it deems best and necessary for the country. And that is the INEC I love. That is the INEC we want. And I pray that it will not capitulate to any form of intimidation or influence. I will go ahead with the electronic transmission of the law. Now the electorate, I plead with them, I implore them to please, please collect this money from these money bags, these depraved characters that are accidentally discharged onto the political surface. Collect the money from them and vote your conscience. Then the change will start. But if we allow things to remain the way they are, because no matter the agitation, the agitation is going on so far in the country is just to create awareness. It's just to let the people and this is the government know that we are not happy. Also to create awareness that, look, things are wrong and we need a change. We need a better society. That is the essence of the agitation. But the that agitation itself will not translate into a better government unless the masses themselves use the card the voters start to affect that desired change they need. That voter's card is important. They must register, they must vote, and they must vote their conscience. Yeah. Nobody will know who you voted until the results are out. By which time the changes would have been done. So collect this money, go in there, vote, and walk away. So that by 2023, we are going to have people in power that will be there in the image of the masses, and not plutocrats, and not people that are autocentric. We don't want such characters. We want people that are altruistic, people that will ensure that the interests of the masses are distant their own personal interests. That is where we have good governance, and not what we have today. So by that, for us to have a change come 2023, it depends. It's predicated on one, the INEC, two, the because the Electoral Act. I'm not bothered about it because the Electoral Act is inferior to the Constitution. Therefore, the, even the Mr. President signs it into law, it is not a law unless it's, the INEC chairman has been intimidated, maybe financially or otherwise. Because even to remove him, they cannot. The National Assembly has to. Nevertheless, the electoral, the uh, uh, electoral, the sorry, the uh, uh, voters that is Nigerians, the electorate, and INEC. If we must have an, and most, but most importantly, the electorate, because INEC is just a reflection of your vote. INEC will not change the results for you. So the electorate must ensure that they get registered and they use their PVC. They don't compromise their conscience. They use their PVC to effect that change we want. No amount, because we are not going to have a coup. So no amount of protest, no amount of agitation will effect any change unless come, to, unless 20, uh, come 2023, when we have a right, the mandate to constitutionally vote in who we want to vote in and vote out who we want to vote out. Well, the... the um you know, the responsibility of these pressure groups, you know, um, wh whoever they are, wherever they are, um, also, I believe, has to include encouraging uh, the electorate to get registered and get ready to vote, you know, and increasing the number of registered voters um, and um, also encouraging more and more Nigerians to get involved with the electoral process, because that has been one of the challenges. If you don't have numbers, you can't really, you know, make a change. And so yeah, these but, pressure groups have a lot of work. You don't blame you don't blame Nigeria because the results in Nigeria hardly count. Yeah, I, I understand so that. There's, less, there's, there's, there's lethargy. There's lethargy. There's apathy everywhere because it hardly count. I, it's I, not high in, 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 internal, in internal it is for you to cast a vote, and it's not the result is not a reflection of your vote. Yeah, I totally so understand that. You are not going to cast. So that's why I'm, I'm pleading with them. 
and you don't blame them. You don't really blame their dividends in the in the country, in the system. You don't you don't really blame them. You must appeal to them and let them understand and give them that confidence that their votes will come. It's only at that time, at that point, that and that is like you rightly said, that is where the pressure groups come in. It is yeah. not just to say Mr. President is wrong, Mr. President is right. If Mr. President decides to continue in what he's doing, that's what you can do. Yeah, uh, but, but so I, I, I want to... It's convincing the electorate yeah. to go get registered and ensure that they don't compromise their votes and ensure that they don't compromise their country. Yeah, I, I, and we started this conversation yesterday. I spoke with um, 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 an uh, advocate, a human development um, advocate, um, yesterday, and we're speaking mostly on you know different tactics with which you know this can be achieved. You know how to get more people registered, how to get more people to um, understand the value that they have in their voter, voters' card, and what they can you know the change that they can effect. But I want us to quickly go back to 2019. You remember that there were pressure groups in 2019. There were certain figureheads that came up then. Um, the likes of Obi Ezekwesili and Donald Duke and even former President Lucio uh, Gombasanjo. There, there were, you know, a couple of these small movements here and there. Um, what mistakes do you think they made in 2019 that they should try to avoid um, in 2023, um, you know, to ensure that, you know, it does have some effect? Because it seems like all of those things broke down before the elections in 2019. Uh, not really. I, I, I will not completely agree with you because um, the 20 to 19 general elections results uh, were quite contentious. Yeah. You remember the issue of uh, Sava, the issue of this. Yes, issue I remember. That's why people are talking of electronic. Yes, that's why we are talking of electronic transmission of results. So, highly contentious. I strongly believe that that's for the Sava issue that the court refused to admit. Uh, it should have been really difficult to have declared Buari or for Buari to have remained in office. So those, that, those groups, and that what we're having today, the issue of electronic transmission of the other, is a function, is a derivative from that particular, uh, 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 from some of those uh, pressure groups and agitation. So you cannot completely dismiss it as a failure. It is not a failure. Look, every step taken has an impact. It might not come to fruition immediately. But it will eventually come to play. It's a build-up. It's like when you have this sense of feeling. Sense of feeling is not something that is not a reaction of what happened immediately. It's a reaction of the remote and immediate cause. So that is exactly. So we cannot dismiss any pressure group. We cannot dismiss any agitation because they all have subliminal effects. And eventually, they will. There will be an outburst. There will be an explosion and an explosion. Now, not every agitator is doing so sincerely and genuinely. Some are doing so for pecuniary reasons. No doubt about that. But like I always advise people, if nobody will convince you that you're a woman, my brother, you're a man, nobody can come and convince you. So nobody needs to tell you how bad the situation is in this country. Our political engine is overheating. Social climate, exceeding information, economic atmosphere, are highly combustible. That we are headed slowly but steadily and cautiously for around the hood. And I think it's irrefragable. It's not in doubt. And nobody needs to tell you. Everybody goes to the market. We pay school fees. We pay electric bills, even though we don't get the lights. So and we are all seized of the problems of this country. And these are man-made problems, born out of uh, greed. So you don't, nobody even needs to tell you to don't vote for A or vote for B. Nobody needs to tell you that. You don't even need a pressure group to show you. All right. In fact, these pressure groups are assisting because you find out that in countries, where you hardly have some of these pressure groups. One day you just get up and there is, a, there is commotion everywhere. There is war everywhere. There is breakdown of law and order. So these pressure groups try to prevail as a mitigate and sort of uh, 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 organize the displeasure, the disapproval that is inherent in most Nigerians. Okay. So you cannot dismiss any pressure group whatsoever because they all have subliminal effects. All right, Mr. One day, um, Mr. one day, they will all be aggregated and brought to crucial. Opunabo Inko Taria, a civil rights advocate, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your perspective on pressure groups this morning. Thank Truly you. appreciate it. Stay with us. Uh, we're moving away from pressure groups now to another, you know, discussion.
the Ebano fire disaster. We spoke about this yesterday morning, but we're bringing up a conversation concerning the legal options, um, you know, that are available to the supermarket chain. And also, how do you deal with a nine-year-old accused of such a crime? We'll talk about that right next with a lawyer.